The Moon Swatch is bad. Hear me out. When the Moon Swatch was announced, like many of you, I was so excited. I'm a massive fan of the Omega Speedmaster. I spent hours looking at various models and lusting over the idea of owning one. Therefore, when an affordable Speedmaster was announced, with Omega even on the dial, I was excited to say the least. It's fair to say that the Moon Swatch broke the internet. It did something that not many watches have done. Broke through the barrier into mainstream media, meaning non-enthusiasts wanted to buy the watch. That excitement died rather quickly though. Shortly after finding out that they were only available in specific locations, living in the north of England meant I was over 200 miles away from even having the chance to buy one. Factoring in the ridiculous queues, slow production and scalpers buying all of the stock, my excitement quickly grinded to a halt and I forgot the watch even existed. That was until recently when I went to Vienna. I was tipped off by one of my fellow watch nerds on Instagram that a store in Vienna had plenty of stock, so I booked my trip. I didn't just go to Austria for a moon swatch though, I promise. There they were, plenty of models out in the store ready to buy. A complete contrast to buying one in the UK. So I whipped out my credit card and paid $240 for a plastic watch. Listen, the Moon Swatch is beautiful. There's a reason the Speedmaster is so popular. The design is flawless. Factoring in the fun, funky colorways, it embodies exactly what Swatch is all about. There is still one massive problem with it though. As soon as I purchased the Moon Swatch, I went straight back to my hotel room and unboxed it. I even did a video of myself peeling off the crystal protector. I spent a good half an hour looking at it in different lights and different angles. It is very good looking, I have to say. For the next week or so, I wore it almost every day. Luckily, I had some new burgundy vans that the dial and bezel matched. I have to say, I enjoyed the wearing experience of the Moon Swatch. It fits my wrist very well, and it's very well designed. Now, the problem begins when we start talking about value for money. These are, stripped down, plastic watches with a basic movement. I mean, you can get a chronograph from any other brand that outperforms the Moon Swatch in every way for a very similar price. There's even numerous cases of the Moon Swatches breaking easily, scratching in the protective box, which is quite funny by the way, and even the colour rubbing off of the case. So why the hell is this watch over $200? So we've been fed by the Swatch Group that these bio-ceramic watches are a must-buy. I mean, everyone and their dog seems to know about the Moon Swatch. Fair play to the marketing department, they smashed it out of the park with this release. Not only has it created a massive buzz for Swatch, but also the Speedmaster model too. So does the Moon Swatch scratch that Speedmaster itch. Well, kind of. I mean, it certainly looks like the Speedmaster, especially the Moon and the Mercury versions, which are near impossible to get hold of, by the way. It's crazy that a Swatch watch is demanding three times its retail price, so the only real choice is the less realistic models. The more colourful versions do look a little like a child's toy. They're certainly fun and quirky, though. You can definitely enjoy the watch depending on your approach to the whole situation. If you buy a Moon Swatch because you simply want an affordable Speedmaster, you've got it all wrong. It simply isn't going to give you any sort of satisfaction. Functionally, the Moon Swatch doesn't come close to the Speedmaster. You don't get it wet, knock it too hard, even close the box that it comes in against the crystal. It's inferior in every single way to the Speedmaster and it's not even close. So physically and mechanically, the watch is bad. Plastic case, plastic crystal, cheap quartz movement, and as mentioned earlier, plenty of cases of the watch failing way before it should. This watch is terrible value for money. However, if you want a collectible watch, maybe one to have on display and wear on occasion, then it's a great little ticker. Especially if you're a fan of the Speedmaster look. You get a watch with the same case, size, design, as one of the most iconic watches of all time, with Omega even printed on the dial. Just don't be expecting to feel that satisfaction of owning a Speedmaster because it just doesn't happen. At least it didn't for me. The biggest selling point of the Moon Swatch is the fact that this thing will probably be worth a lot of money in about 10 years time. My guess is that the Moon Swatch will be discontinued at some point in the next year or so, and after that, prices will begin to rise. However, if you haven't taken care of the watch, be it scratches on the case or any noticeable damage, then I imagine these things will be pretty worthless. So again, it's a watch that you'll have to take care of. The Moon Swatch is not what I was expecting. I love the Speedmaster. It's a watch that someday I'll own and I'll wear with pride. However, this Moon Swatch doesn't give me any sort of feeling when it's on my wrist, except maybe a bit of exclusivity. It certainly isn't a luxury watch, which is what you'd expect with the Speedmaster branding. It's a Swatch that costs three times the price of all the other Swatch models. One thing I will give the Moon Swatch props for though is the thing is incredibly photogenic. I mean, it just looks beautiful on camera. I've seen hundreds of wrist shots on Instagram and they all blow me away. It's definitely an eye catcher. So what am I gonna do with my Moon Swatch? It will likely stay on display most of the time. I will wear it on occasion when I'm feeling flamboyant, but I'll have to make sure I'm careful with it. It is after all a plastic watch that cost me over $200 and I don't fancy knocking it against a wall and losing more than half my money because the pusher has snapped off. So 
I regret the moon swatch. Not because I think it's horrendous or that I think it's terrible, but it just doesn't give me that satisfaction of owning a Speedmaster. I'm sure to some people it may, but for me, it has not. I will, however, keep the moon swatch for a few years and see where it goes. Maybe it grows on me. Maybe it's just a watch for me to take some pretty photos of. Instead of spending $250 on a moon swatch, why don't you check out my video here on the best watches under $250.